Hello, and welcome back to Stencil School. I'm Mary Beth Shaw, the founder and one of the owners of Stencil Girl Products. I've made it my mission to educate people on stencils, and I think once you learn how to use stencils, you will fall in love because here I am all these years later and I'm still totally passionate about stencils. So today we are going to talk about using stencils on fabric and I have some examples of things that I've made and then I also want to show you a few techniques and a few things that I want to do moving forward and so anyway let's turn the camera and we will um, start to take a look okay all right here's my desktop covered with things and these are all fabric and I want to tell you how I've made all of these and show you how you can make them for yourself first of all let me just say, if you're going to use a stencil with paint on fabric, the very first thing you need to know is, are you going to be laundering the fabric later? Are you going to put it in the wash? Because if you're going to put it in the wash, you need to use a fabric paint. Lots of times I'm just doing fabric for things like this, like banners or a little embroidery thing, or a little embellishment. So these are not gonna go through the laundry. And you know what? You don't need any special paint for this. You can use whatever you want. And it doesn't matter if it gets a little stiff. In fact, for this, for this banner project, the fact that it got stiff actually makes them look better as banners. So that is the very first question you need to ask yourself. If you're not going to launder it, if you're not going to put it in the wash, doesn't matter what kind of paint you use, okay? Just use whatever you want. If you are going to put your, your fabric into the wash after you stencil it, you need to add a fabric medium to it. Now, I would use GAC 900, Heat Set Fabric Painting Medium. This is manufactured by Golden. There are lots of other fabric mediums, and you can find a number of these at Joann's um, since they happen to sell fabric also. They have fabric mediums. And so you could add this paint to any, or this, um, this medium to any kind of paint, and then you could follow the instructions on the back, and it will tell you how to heat set it, so then you can launder it and so forth. And, you know, I'm just gonna be straight. I've never done it, okay? The instructions are right here on the back. It tells you precisely what to do. And anywho, I think it's a great idea. I don't do that. Why? Because I'm lazy. And two, because I'm always just making stuff for my journals and so forth, and it's not gonna be laundered. All right, so this project is on muslin. I just went to the fabric store, bought some unbleached muslin, and I literally started painting it. And all I did was layer up paint after paint after paint after paint and stencil after stencil after stencil to create basically my own fabric, okay? I picked a couple stencils that I thought would go together. I picked a few colors I thought would go together and that's what I did. These words, I'm gonna show you how to make in a minute, but um, this is the background and it's really that easy. You know, it's just super easy to do. And it's fun, it's really gratifying because then you can start, it's just like starting with a piece of white paper, except you're starting with a piece of white or off-white fabric instead. I have, um, I have some over here. Actually, this isn't muslin, this is just, you know how you'll be at a, um, like a yard sale or something and somebody is selling inexpensive napkins. Well, these were just these napkins and they didn't have any bad smell to them. I always give everything the smell test. I can't help myself. And so I thought, wow, this is just great fabric I could use for anything. So I thought I would um, just buy these for like a buck and now I have some fabrics. And I love having that in store. The words on here 
are stenciled onto this wide sari ribbon. This is unbleached sari ribbon and it's silk. Uh, let me show you, it comes in a big roll like this. I just did a search for it on Etsy, which is where I found mine. And um, I mean, look at how big that roll is. It'll last me for the rest of my life, right? But I love this because it's so thin and you can easily um, add it to your other projects. Here, I stenciled the word and then I took the piece of silk and I stitched it on my machine. You can see it better through the back. I, and I am no seamstress, people. You can see how I couldn't even keep a straight line there. So I want to show you how to do that. And then some other things. But let's get started first. Let's look at these letters first and the words. All right. This is just a hunk of cardboard that I saved from a box. And what is really nice is fabric, as you know, look how floppy it is, right? So this is going to be difficult to stencil on. And we want it to be as smooth as possible because then it'll stencil on it better, okay? So one way to do that is to get a piece of cardboard and I am just going to put some pins around it to keep it in place. So that way... It'll hold it in place while I'm stenciling. You could tape the edges too. I just happen to have these pins handy. You could use some of this tape like we've used before. This is the, um, the painter's tape, the Scotch Blue multi-surface painter's tape. This is a really nice way to keep it down there. And so, Look at it, it's not gonna move around that much if you do this, which is gonna be great. Now, when I'm stenciling words, and when I'm stenciling on the sari ribbon, which is silk, I tend to use ink pads instead of paint, just because I like how dry they are. And I mean, I know they're wet, but they're dry. And I think if you've used paint versus ink pads, you understand what I mean by that. There are two brands I use. One is the Ranger Archival Inks because they're permanent. And the other is this brand. This is called yellowowlworkshop.com. And the reason I've used this one is because once when I took a fabric class, they introduced me to this. It's an ink pad for fabric paper and more so I just bring that up because they have a lot of fun colors like this green and um, other colors so search for something that is permanent or something that is made for fabric or any kind of ink pad so now words so this is just like how I like words in other manifestations I love to put words in my journal. So this is a great stencil and there's some super words on here. Now let's say I want to do that word fly. Well, there it is in the middle of the stencil. And that is kind of complicated. It's like, oh my gosh, what do you do with that, right? So let me show you a couple options. First of all, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take these pins out and just go to the whole tape thing. I just mainly wanted to show you options if you didn't happen to have this tape. All right, so let's tape this one. And it's down there pretty solid. I want to show you two ways you could do that word fly. All right, so using any of the tools we learned about previously, you can apply the ink to this. So I'm going to lay it where I want it, and this is what we call a pretty tight stencil. You noticed it wasn't real floppy, right? And I'm just stenciling all around it with the ink pad, and all the words are there. So you have this section that you can use. Now, when you used it, when you use this, you would need to do something to make the fly really pop out. So you could embroider that, do some slow stitching on top of it. You could go around it with a permanent marker. You could do a number of things to make that really pop out. 
But let's say you really just want the word fly. You don't want those other things around there. So guess what? That's when you use this blue tape again. I think we talked about this before, and I just cannot overestimate the, um, the value of the blue tape. I mean, it is so awesome. So you just tape around the, the fly so that fly's still exposed, right? But you tape over the words that are kind of all around it so that you only are gonna get fly when you stencil. I really love doing this and sometimes if I'm just not in the mood to do anything that takes a lot of bandwidth meaning brain power I will just stencil different words and then have them ready to go in future projects and it's really nice to have them on hand so I'm gonna get some more of this and we'll just use the word fly now you if you have a good eye you might see that I'm going in a little bit circular motion here Mainly it's because this um, stencil is so tight and so crisply made, it allows me to go like that without ruining any of the other spots. Now probably what I could do here, since I've already done this other section, is I'm going to just lay the stencil over top again and darken the fly in there. Okay. And that will make that really pop out. So see how that sends the other, the other words into the background and brings this one forward. It looks a lot more crisp that way. Love doing this and having this on hand. This, I don't know, this unbleached sari ribbon is just gorgeous. So let's say you did want to embroider this you know I am certainly not going to give you any slow stitching lessons because although I can do it it is not what I consider a skill set for myself so you would need to google that but you could certainly just do a running stitch around the letters you could do satin stitch over top of them or you could just leave it just like this and seriously this is so thin you can glue it in your journals with a glue stick and it works just great 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 now here is one where I took a little piece, this is I believe muslin or linen, and this is a cat cur stencil. It says seek, 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 seek all over it. I love the word seek because for years I've called myself a seeker, right? So what I did was I stenciled seek, just the same way I just showed you, and then I tore it out, you know, tore it like fabric, and then I layered it up, and with the machine and boom so this is a way you can develop fabric words that you could sew onto your journals you could glue them onto your journals you could glue them onto your art you could glue them onto your clothing whatever you want to do with them it's really really a fun way to expand the repertoire of your stencils now here's a piece where I was just painting wildly on, again, muslin, just plain muslin. I did not use any kind of a medium, no medium, okay? And I can tell because it's stiff to the hand, right? It just feels, see how that's holding up? It doesn't even really look like muslin anymore because it's stiff. So if I want to use this as a book cover or something, it's going to be just great for those purposes. But again, I just want to remind you, if you're making fabric things that you want to wear and use and launder, you need to use a heat set fabric medium or some kind of a fabric medium. All right, here's another way to use a stencil with fabric. So here's what I did. This is this stencil. And this is what I would consider a somewhat advanced stencil. And I say that because we already learned it's kind of floppy and it's harder to control than others, okay? So that kind of changes your use of it. Let's say you want to do a singular flower and you want to embroider it. Maybe a stencil like this would be better 
because this is more controlled and it gives you the same kind of effect. You could do slow stitching in every one of those little parts, whatever you want to do. So let's take a look how we might approach this. Get our cardboard back and um, I think I have a piece torn down already. Yes, I do. And let's just place the fabric right on the cardboard and I'm going to kind of stretch it across there because I want it to be kind of stretched out. This tape is still here, so I think I shall just use it. Smooth it out. You could iron it down to make sure it's even, you know, on there better. You could use a temporary glue stick underneath the fabric if you so desired. Whatever you want to do. But let me just show you an easy way to use this somewhat advanced stencil. This is actually not even big enough, but it's still gonna work for what I wanna show you, all right? And instead of using paint, you are going to use a pencil or some kind of other implement that's kind of pointy and you're gonna trace. So for me, I'm going to trace the inside and the outside. And I'm not going to do this whole thing. I'm just going to get it started to show you how this worked for me in the past. Okay, so here I've got a little bit of the stencil traced onto the muslin like I did here. This is a piece of unstretched, a very lightweight canvas. So that was the first thing I did here. I traced around there. You can still see some of the lines, the tracing lines. Then I went and I found fabric that I liked. I picked three or four different fabrics that I wanted to use. And I used this again and I traced those fabrics. And then I used a glue stick and glued them on like it was a puzzle, right? So like this one, let's say I wanted to use, um, you know, this fabric, I would trace the inside or the outside, either one, cut it out, use a glue stick and glue it down. Then when you have it all glued together, like it is here, you can just start your slow stitching on top. Now, I've been working with this one for a while. It, like, it always ends up being a demo, and so then it actually never makes it into my real sewing bag. So consequently, I haven't finished it. Um, when I did this one, though, you will see I did paint in every so often. I painted in some of them, and then I also glued fabric in some. I mean, truly, whatever you can think of is what you should do because the sky's the limit here. I mean, there are so many different options. It's really fun to think about ways that you can embellish and use these stencils. So you are more advanced and you wanna use this one, do it. You're not and you want something that's a little more stable, use something like this. Now, let me show you another thing about a stencil like this. This is what we call a stencil mask combination. So when the stencil arrives, this is what it looks like. And you can see that this flower is kind of coming out of there, right? Well, when you look close, and I'm gonna see if I can get this up to the camera here. All right, when you look close, you pull this up and there is a little tab right there, right there. And all you do is snip it with your tiniest scissors and look how that came out. And then there's another little one right there and another little one right here. We do this on purpose so that you get two pieces. And when you see these on our website, you'll see them shown in two parts like this. 
So what you can do is you can lay down. Let's um, do this. Um, let me. I'm going to grab a piece of black paper so I can show you better. All right. I've got a piece of black paper here, and I'm going to put them side by side, and then I'm going to show you how you can use a mask and a stencil. All right, I've got two colors, two colors that I think will look nice together, and I'm gonna show you how this will work. I'm gonna just put my water out, or my paint out over here, because I'm gonna be cutting this out later. All right, so swirl my brush around a little bit, get the paint on it, tap on, tap off, like we've been doing and do the background of this stencil. Now you could do as much or as little as you want. I'm not gonna fully cover it because I do want some of that black to come through. I think it's gonna add a lot of depth in the stenciling. So there we go, that's this piece. Now the hardest part is <laughs> remembering how they go afterwards and um, I'm gonna just look like an idiot here so I try to match this up because this is the hardest part and <laughs> it's just like challenges my um, my ability to match these up there it is okay so there it is right so now we have them together here and we're gonna lay it back over top, right where it goes, okay? There it is, I'm gonna leave it there while I get this other paint ready. And I didn't use much paint, so it's pretty dry right now anyway. I should have shaken that a little bit more. Hopefully this will be enough to give us our contrast. Poured out more than I need, and you can see I'm really brushing it off now. All right, so I'm gonna try to hold both of these. You could even do three colors if you wanted with this. You could use some markers and go in there. This is a technique that you can transform to your heart's content, right? All right, so then you bring it up and here you have this result where you have a two color stencil using a stencil and a mask and then I left a little bit of the black so you are seeing some depth from underneath. Now I'm just going to be straight and say that I am not real thrilled with the color contrast here. I was thinking it's going to be more so let me add another color. Let's see if we can pop this out a little bit. You heard me say pop. And you know, for me, that's a fluorescent, right? Oh, I can't help myself. I can't help myself. And I realize I'm demoing this on paper, but this will work the same on fabric. Even this, the day we're covering fabric right now, it'll still work. So you can just go around here, add a few little pops, leave some of the under showing, and then pull it up and you have yet another manifestation of the flower. So you can keep doing this as much as you want. I want, ideally, everybody to feel so comfortable with the stencils that you start pushing the limit of them. You know what I mean? You, you think of new things to do and you try these different ways of layering them up and layering the color or you can even move the stencil a little bit and stencil again to get a little drop shadow look. So many things. You guys, I hope I didn't just explode your brain with ideas here, but as you can see, I get excited. So go play with fabric and stencils, embroider, make things you can cut out and put in your journals, just do whatever it is you think you want to do and have fun. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching Stencil School.